third of eight children from St. Giles Parish in Oak Park. At Fenwick, he was the captain of the cross country team, a four year member of the track team, and active in the drama program. After graduating from the University of Notre Dame in 1978, Father Shea joined the Franciscans in 1980 and was ordained a priest in 1987. Father Ed has spent most of his priesthood and parish work, including four years as the priest presider at the St. Giles Family Mass Community and five years as the pastor of St. John the Baptist Church in Joliet. He was also pastor of St. Joseph Parish, a predominantly Hispanic community in Chicago's famous Back of the Arts neighborhood. Father Ed presently serves on the Provincial Council and is Director of Formation of the Franciscans of the Sacred Heart Providence. During the summer of 2009, Father Shea participated in a pilgrimage with five other Franciscans. They walked approximately 300 miles from Roanoke, Virginia to Washington, D.C. Carrying no money or credit cards, sleeping bags, or other amenities, they relied solely on the hospitality of many generous people. Their extraordinary journey was featured on the front page of the Washington Post on the day they arrived in D.C. Upon arriving home to Chicago, Father Shea was invited to sing the national anthem at the White Sox game on August 19, 2009. His greatest accomplishment. <laughs> A man who loves to sing and tell stories more than anything, Father Shea thrives on celebrating the sacrament of the church. A true follower of St. Francis, he finds reason to rejoice often in the goodness of God's presence in our world. Please join me in congratulating my friend and classmate, Father Ed Shea, as he is the Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord. And where there's doubt, true faith in you. It's a great prayer, isn't it? Written by the greatest saint who ever lived. I know I'm a little biased, I know. <laughs> but really, if you think about that, Peace Prayer of St. Francis, it is... A prayer that is what we all want. You know, nobody gets up in the morning and says, I wonder how I could ruin somebody's day today. No, we get up in the morning and we think, okay, another day, another chance. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. Where there's sadness, joy. It's what we all want, right? And the, and the challenge, of course, is to try to figure out how to do it. <laughs> And to realize, and I think this is the most important thing, that we're not in this thing by ourselves. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there's despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there's sadness, ever joy. I remember one, uh, one time many years ago, my nephew took up the trumpet. I was also a uh, trumpet player in the band here. We had a little, little tiny little band here back before the Fen Naz days. We had a great band here at Fenwick. And uh, we couldn't even form an F on the football field. You didn't have people. <laughs> but I, I remember my nephew took up the trumpet and, uh, and he was, you know, going to imitate his uncle and play the trumpet and he'd start practicing. And you know how it is with when people start playing instruments, not too great, you know, it sounded pretty bad. Nah, 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 nah. And he said, uh, he, he, one, time, one time he came home from school, he was so excited, he had his little trumpet case, you know, comes running into the kitchen, he puts his trumpet case down, and he said to his mother, he said, Mom, you know what? He said, I sound really good when the whole band is playing. <laughs> That's the truth for us, isn't it? We sound really good when the whole band is playing. We're not in this thing by ourselves. I learned that prayer, Peace Prayer of St. Francis, when I was a child, but I think I learned what it, may, what it really means when I came here to Fenway. You know what I learned here at Fenwick? I learned that relationships are all that really matter. Being authentic, being a good friend, being an honest person,
being an instrument of God's peace and love is all that really matters in life. You know, and I want to invite you, students, to think about that as, you, as we approach Easter, as we go through this time of Lent. Ask yourself the question, who am I? What is my relationship with the world? You know, I always say, I, at the end of my life, I would like people to say two things about me. I like to say, he was like a brother to me. I have one blood brother, he's with me today. He looks a lot like me in many ways. And he's a brother to me. I want to be a brother to the world. I learned that here at Fenwick. I learned about that brotherliness, and especially from my classmates, the greatest class of 1974. Especially a few years ago when we went to Las Vegas for our 35th anniversary. I'm not going to tell you any more about that. <laughs> There's something powerful about those relationships, about what we learn about being in a relationship with each other. Oh, Master, grant that I may never see so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. So I want to invite you students to do something important. Take a great leap of faith in your life. Trust God. I heard a preacher say once, God is not interested in our abilities. God is interested in our availability. I invite you, young people, to pay attention to your relationship with God because you have one and you know it. Deep in your heart, there's a God who loves you, who's calling you, who wants you to be great. And that greatness is deep inside of you. Take a great leap of faith in your life. This, uh, my friend Danny Romano mentioned this pilgrimage. It was a great leap of faith. We walked with nothing in our hands. We had nothing. Actually, I have to admit, I did carry a credit card in my pocket, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't have to use it. You know. One day, I'll tell you one, one time, one, one moment that was really awesome. We were walking along, and we had people had given us money, you know. So we tallied up all the money we had, and we had way too much. So we gave a bunch of money away, gave it to a church, and we had $150.75. It was a, a hot Sunday night, so we went to a restaurant. We went inside the restaurant, we ordered food, everybody had something to eat, a Reuben sandwich, you know, iced tea, all that kind of stuff. And our bill came to $75 and something. So we made a decision, we're going to give everything we've got to this waitress. So we gave this lady $150.75. We walked out of that, that restaurant and we felt absolutely free. There we were, with nothing. And the six of us walked about a half a block, a half a mile down the street, and we found a fire station. Their firemen were there, you know. And we said, hey, could we sleep behind the firehouse? The guy said, I'll show you, I'll do, give you something better. So we walked, uh, we walked behind in the woods of the fire, behind the fire station, and he showed us a little, like a picnic area, a couple picnic tables, and a trampoline. So we decided to sleep in the trampoline. <laughs> we thought it was a good idea, but it wasn't. <laughs> I mean, imagine, uh, you know, we're like spokes on a wheel, all six of us, and pretty soon gravity takes over, and then when one guy has to turn to go to the, to go to the bathroom, everybody has to get jostled around. <laughs> Nobody slept too well that night. But we were together. It was a great adventure. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, in giving of ourselves that we receive, and in dying that we're born to eternal life. Fenwick, pay attention to this call of God in your life. Trust God. Let me tell you one more story about a, a guy who goes to Niagara Falls for his honeymoon. Couples at Niagara Falls and they're having a great time and they're looking out over the fa falls and all of a sudden they see a guy with a wheelbarrow and he's, he's walking across Niagara Falls on a wire. Imagine that. Stepping out, turns around and walks back. Couple's amazed. Waves at him. How you doing? Takes his wheelbarrow, starts walking out across the falls, almost falls, gets back up, walks back to the shore. So he looks at the couple and he says, do you think I could do that again? They said, well, yeah, you're, you got pretty good man. No, no, do you really believe me? 
Well, yeah, we think, no, no, no. Do you really trust me? You think I can do that again? Do you really trust me? The couple said, yeah. He said, all right, hop in. <laughs> That's my invitation to you, family. Hop in the spiritual wheelbarrow. I can't leave you here without inviting some of you, all of you, to consider the life of the priesthood. Especially you young men, Franciscans or Dominicans, either one, it's okay. <laughs> and, and, uh, and you sister, and you women, uh, religious life, religious community, or some kind of a commitment in the life of the church. I thank my brother Franciscans who are here today, showing off the brown, surrounded by all these white Dominicans. <laughs> and we're proud of our, our vocation, we're proud of our life. Let me tell you, it's a great life. It's quite an adventure. Hop in that spiritual wheelbarrow. Let God take you somewhere. Let me conclude by giving you a blessing. When St. Francis was in the world, he'd come into a town and he would say, Buongiorno, buona gente. He was Italian, you know. And when he would leave, he would also leave with a great blessing. He would say to people, Pax et bonum. Now Father Wren taught me well here at Fenwick. Pax et bonum. It means peace and everything good. That's my prayer for you, Fenwick. My prayer for you, Friars. Pax et bonum. May God's peace enter into your heart. May God's love and healing touch every part of your life and every part of your family that needs healing. And may God remember every good thing you've ever done and give you a blessing for it. Pax et bonum. Peace and everything good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Father Ed. That was wonderful. Uh, to introduce our